All right, so the day before is finally here. I played all day yesterday, streaming it for a few hours and then playing for several more off stream myself. And I gotta say my first impressions are not good. Things immediately began poorly as I was downloading the game. Liam managed to finish and get in. First thing that happened after making a character, he fell through the floor, infinitely falling through space, forcing him to reboot. I thought, okay, yeah, that's kind of funny, but he's probably just unlucky. So I clicked on a random Twitch stream because I wanted to watch some gameplay while I was downloading and the exact same thing was happening. The guy stream that I was watching made a character and immediately fell through the floor. Like I literally couldn't believe it, but you know, whatever. We'll just give it a shot ourselves, right? So I got in, booted up my my stream and the adventure began. Now, after making a character where you select from a variety of visual and class options, you wake up in Woodbury. Now, fortunately, I didn't end up falling through the floor and was able to progress, being introduced to what is essentially the game's main town or social hub full of NPCs and other players. The prologue takes you through all the major vendors and stations. There's a doctor, guns and ammo, storage, and a workbench. All the stuff was actually fine. Woodbury is a cool looking location. It has the standard vendors you'd expect, and it was was neat seeing other players running around. Uh, after about 20 minutes, I am then directed to the homestead. This is where they, they have the game's player housing. Now, having left the confines of the instant social hub, however, my frame rate immediately tanked. Oh, that was really... Why is that so choppy all of a sudden? Ooh, ooh, jeez. What is happening? Hey guys, how's the stream, how's it running for you right now? I was getting, oh, I don't know, about like 10 frames per second at this point. Now things did smooth out after about a minute, but this was not a good sign and turned out to be a bit of a performance foreshadowing. I proceeded to build my base, selecting from various templates. Uh, you're able to place down buildings and other stuff basically. So to start, I had access to this tent, a camp cot, and a few decorative items. And I thought this was neat, like it seemed fine. Although in all my remaining playtime, I have not once yet revisited this area as there hasn't seemed to be a reason to do so. But so far, not so bad. Like beyond the frame drops, a few awkward dialogue choices. All right. Your speech organ seem fine. My speech organ? Feeling? And the unlucky people who start out falling through the floor. Uh, this introduction, 30 minutes or so, was fine. Not my preferred way to start a game. I like getting into the action and not talking to NPCs for 30 straight minutes, but ultimately nothing aggressively bad had happened at this point. Well, that all changed as soon as I left the social hub and headed out into New Fortune City. Or to put another way, once it was time to actually start playing the game, things immediately took a turn for the worse. This has just been a pretty awful experience. All around, I think this game is really, really not good, but let's talk about the reasons why. For starters, the gun feedback is bad, with there being quite heavy delay on shooting effects and hit registration. Many times it'll be hard to tell if you've even hit anything after shooting or how much damage you did, so for that reason, in most cases, you'll just keep shooting, hoping the thing you're aiming at dies. Now, a majority of the time, what'll happen is you fire a shot and there's at least like a one to two second delay before you see that shot register or before the animations of your target being hit end up showing. But even worse is that in some circumstances, and this especially seems to be the case in PvP when you're engaging with another player and dealing with their connection from their PC to the servers and then from the servers back to you and back and forth. When you're fighting another player, this is even more exaggerated. Many times you'll unload an entire clip into the player and then several seconds will go by. They'll run around a corner or take cover or go into the street, move through a door, whatever. And then after like a good four to five seconds, they just drop dead on the floor. In fact, this is exact thing happened when Liam and I were in Discord chatting. Uh, we happened to be on the same server and I ended up killing him. That was a real fight. That's a real gunfight. Is he dead? Uh, I died. Ah! <laughs> oh, did you kill me? You? Yeah, I just died. I'm in, Wait, I'm that in was you? Store, yeah. <laughs> Did you, did you get my stuff? I'm absolutely loaded, dude. <laughs> What's hilarious about this beyond the fact that that happened was you can see I unload into him. He then runs around the truck and ends up falling dead several feet and a few seconds later. Like it is the registration of the of these shots happening is super bad. In addition to that, I would say the sound effects in this game are not great, but I'm not even so much talking about the sounds of the gunshots themselves. Like, do they sound like guns? Whatever. But it's how the game handles positional and directional audio that appears to be quite poor. The distance and direction of gunshots or really any sounds in the 
game seem terribly inaccurate. So, so you'll, you'll hear something that sounds like it's just next door, like maybe a few feet away from you, but it ends up being around the block or even streets over. Gunshots, player sounds like footsteps, zombie gurgles, alarms. Oh, and did I mention the alarms? Um, they are omnipresent, aggressively and hilariously so. I need a, I, I basically need to go back to Woodbury. Oh, sorry, guys. Just have to run by this alarm. One of the hundred alarms triggered right now. These are just constantly going off all the time, everywhere. It's super loud, and as far as I could tell, there was no way of shutting them off. I couldn't shoot them. I couldn't interact with the pads to turn them off, as we had seen in uh, preview gameplay footage. Now, I was told by people that you needed to actually pick a character who, ha who basically had the perk that let them shut off the alarms. Apparently, I didn't, so I was just constantly listening to alarms blaring everywhere from basically every shop, every door that you could walk into. Besides the larger buildings, all, all those small stores along the roads appear to have an alarm, and they were just constantly being triggered. It was super annoying. I don't know what else to say. I'm also fairly certain that the game pumps out fake gunshot sounds. Now, this sounds very con conspiratorial, right? But it's like, oh, they're putting out uh, fake gun sounds to make it sound like there's players playing when there actually isn't. I'm not s accusing them of doing that, but I do think they're just putting gun fake gun sounds in there just for the heck of it, or it seems to be the case if this isn't some sort of a bug. So what happened is I was walking around the city and I kept hearing shots nearby. So I would move towards the, that sound's location. It looked to be like it was inside of an, a, bu a building, but I couldn't see the entrance. So I would like walk around the entire perimeter of the building, looking for an entrance, looking for the source of the sound, but there wasn't any. This was one of those building blocks that had no uh, actual storefront or entrance to it, but I kept hearing the shots and I kept running around the building. There was never a source of those shots other than them just being generated. There's also things like, you know, the zombie AI in this game isn't very good. It doesn't make a lot of sense most of the time. Sometimes they won't see you when you're right next to them or you could be sprinting by them and nothing will happen. Other times they'll be hyper aware of you. It's just very inconsistent, really. Animations also of these zombies, they are very few animations. The ones that are there aren't very good. They don't actually sync up with the hits and the movement of the character. Everything is very glitchy and buggy. Speaking of bugs and glitch, dude, lots of them. The ones that we've seen personally so far are things like zombies being stuck in vehicles or on the terrain. Players getting stuck in terrain. Uh, we saw players locked behind fences, the falling through the floor that we mentioned at the beginning. There were many instances of players just not appearing. For example, when in the social hub, you would see just like the, the data pads, the tablets floating around. There would be a player kneeling, looking at it, but you just didn't see the player. So all you ended up with was a floating data pad. And in fact, if we want to go back to the gunshot thing, maybe it's the case that the shots were real, but I couldn't see the players because we've seen that there can be invisible players. We've seen all sorts of issues with animations, bugs, and glitches. We know that invisible players are a thing. It's uh, happened in the social hub at least. So maybe the gunshot sound thing being fake isn't the reality but maybe there's just invisible players running around shooting that we just can't see, but we can hear them. That's a possibility as well. Many, many, many instances of character animations glitching out. One frequent example that we saw was instead of like seeing a player running as they would be on their screen, we would see them in a kneeling position, just sliding at sprinting speed across the floor, just not moving as if they were crouched, like looking in their inventory or looking at their data pad. They were in that position permanently, but sprinting at full speed. It's just, it's just buggy, glitchy. It's not not good. And then yes, those alarms constantly going off. If that is not intentional, maybe we can file that under the bugs and glitches uh, side of things. And then as alluded to earlier on, the performance has not been good. All around, I would say this game performs very badly. Now I have a decent PC. I'm not ultimately the top, top of the line, but I've got an i7 11700K. I've got 64 gigs of RAM. I got a GeForce RTX 3080. For me, the game ran like garbage. Frame rate was all over the place, very inconsistent. The only thing that was consistent was the stuttering that would happen. In addition to hitching that would regularly occur as you move through the city, presumably because the game is loading in areas causing these little Little mini hitches as the loading happens, but the frame rate, the performance was just bad across the board. Now, at first I thought that was because I was streaming, but this can persisted outside of the streaming. When I was no longer streaming, when I was no longer recording gameplay, just running natively on my PC, which has those settings. Again, I don't have the absolute beastiest PC, but that's not bad. RTX 3080, 11700K, 64 gigs of RAM. My PC generally runs most games pretty well, even at a, uh, a 2K resolution. This ran bad. I played around with all the settings. 
I lowered the visual presets, I tried different DS DLSS settings, low latency mode, nothing seemed to cut it. It, it. If anything, it appeared like the longer I played, the progressively worse it got. I don't know if this is issues with hashing, I don't know if this is issues with, with memory leaks, but yes, for me, performance of this game has not been great. Now, I know for some people, it probably is fine because that's just the nature of PC gaming performance can be all over the place. But judging by Steam reviews and from a lot of at least the anecdotal uh, accounts that I've heard, it seems like performance being an issue is pretty widespread. Anytime that there were more than a few zombies nearby, uh, which wasn't very often, but whenever there were more than like two to three zombies, that also seemed to cause some massive FPS drops, which actually kind of leans into my suspicion when they early on prior to release announced that this game would focus on PvP and that the zombie side of things wouldn't be a major emphasis. I thought that might be due to the fact that maybe they want fewer zombies to help with a general performance of the game. I thought that was a possibility. It seems like that might be the case, or at least again, in my personal anecdotal experience whenever there was more than like two zombies nearby performance definitely took a hit so yeah performance is bad there's bugs and glitches all over the place and just generally i didn't think the game felt good to play the shooting also the movement i would say felt really kind of sluggish and lethargic that's the best way i would describe it for argument's sake let's just say they fix all of that all of these issues get resolved they improve the gunplay to make it feel better the, the hit registration the animations and the sounds they fix the bugs and the glitches and performance is ironed out so it doesn't run so poorly and the latency problems let's say they get addressed uh in a few days or weeks from now as the launch rush dies down if we were to snap our fingers and all of those issues were resolved what we're left with is still a shallow content and pretty features lacking game. What kind of game is this, by the way? We've not yet touched on that. Well, originally and still today even, the day before is described by the developer as a post-apocalyptic open world MMO survival game. It is not that, and I actually can't believe that they are still calling that. You go on their Steam page, it's labeled as this open world MMO survival game. This is not an open world MMO. It's not an MMO at all, and I would barely call it a survival game. This is an extraction game. You pick what gear you want to have equipped, you then load into the map, go around scavenging for items while navigating the zombies and other players and trying to escape alive. If you die, you drop most of your stuff. Structurally, this is like most other extraction games, but then it's severely lacking in a lot of what you expect. For one, there are barely any zombies. At most, I would see groups of two to three, but very rarely. I could walk blocks and only see a single zombie in the streets while also, um, interestingly enough, not coming across many other players. For a post-apocalyptic zombie survival MMO, as they call it. The zombies are but a footnote here. Just in general as well, there is not a lot going on. Not very much to see and do in this game. Loot seems few and far between and mechanically besides shooting, looting is all there is to do. Even the quest system is just looting. Every single mission that I have seen so far was just a fetch quest. It would direct you to an area and tell you to loot specific items found within a certain vicinity. There's just not a lot of things. It's also very mechanics and features lack lacking. You can jump, you can run, you can loot, you can shoot. That's all you need, right? But there's a lot of extra layers of things that should be in here, but aren't. There's no mantling, which absolutely blows my mind. This is a UE5 game. I'm pretty sure you can just buy mantling from the Unreal Engine store. I'm being very reductive, but I can't believe there's not mantling in this game. It should definitely be in here and they better add it. There's also no melee in this game, which is extra perplexing because I swear we have seen melee in preview pre-launch footage. There was melee, there were melee weapons. There's no melee system in this game. You can't even butt with your weapon. There are no melee weapons from what we've seen. There is no environmental engagement beyond looting, occasionally opening doors, although you need keypads for any doors that can be opened. And I guess there are elevators that you can um, call and start as well, but very little engagement with the environments. Things like, uh, I don't know, being able to climb ladders, for example, that's not in the game. Again, no mantling system in the game. Engaging with the world, not a lot to it, which is part of what leads to it feeling very, very static. There are no ev events in the game as far as we can tell. Things like horde modes or loot drops happening, things that you might expect from an extraction game, none of that is present here. There doesn't appear to be any bosses or bigger zombie enemies for better loot, again, from what I've seen. Maybe this just requires more playtime. There's also currently no progression in the game, although that was alluded to even in the character creation screen. It mentioned something about progression. There were, you picked classes with different skills, but no progression seems 
seems to be in here. And also no VoIP, which as uh, difficult and uh, frustrating as it can be listening to other players in these games, it definitely does add to a lot of the charm. But ultimately my main point is a lot of things that you might expect from an OP open world zombie survival game, but although that, that's not what this is, it's an extraction game. A lot of things that you would expect from extraction games, a lot of things that you would expect from modern day third person shooters, this game just doesn't seem to have. Even early on from just my first impressions in an afternoon of playing, there does seem to be some pretty clear design and structural um, problems with this game, some issues. There's definitely going to be lots of ways to game the system. From what we could tell, disconnect and teleport safely with all of your items back to Woodbury. So instead of having to go to the extraction zone, at one point I was playing, I got disconnected from the server, I had my backpack full of stuff that I looted, and I just ended up in the safe zone in Woodbury with all the stuff that I looted. That seems like that is going to get abused. But then there's also the fact that there's only two major extraction points. There are a bunch of small extraction points, but you can't take the stuff in your backpack, only the stuff in your pocket, which is a very small space of inventory. You know what this is going to lead to? Without a doubt, people will end up camping these locations to hell. I'm just, I, I, I assume even today, but if not in the next week or two weeks, people will realize if you just camp the only two extraction points that people can actually take their stuff through, that's going to be the best way to get loot. Don't bother going around spending 30, 40, 60 minutes looting the town sit at the extraction point and when everyone who has their loot comes there kill them and take their stuff because they've designed the game with only two static extraction points that's going to be an issue without a question. And just in general, there is very little to explore. A majority of the buildings in the city cannot be entered, even in the rural areas that just have like a smattering of uh, houses. Most of them also can't be entered. Um, there's very little in the sense of use of elevation. Like I, we saw a couple of buildings that had like a second level, but that was basically it. Just in general, very flat, very static. And ultimately, I just felt that playing this game was just pretty boring. And not because I don't like the genre. I I've loved a lot of zombie survival games. I really also like extraction games. It just feels almost like the, the, the thought that I had while playing this game was like, they took the Dark Zone idea from The Division and The Division 2, right? They took that concept and they just then removed 90% of the content and features. And that's what we were left with with the day before. Now, there are good things about this, right? I don't want to be predominantly negative. I will say it looks really good. How much of that is due to Unreal Engine 5 and the pre-bought bought assets that they picked up from the store? Who's Who knows, but who really cares? I think it looks good. I think there's some pretty cool environments and locations, some really neat areas in this map that you can go around and explore that are visually appealing, even if they are not gameplay-wise engaging. I also think the premise is fine. Like I said, Zombie Survival survival games I like I like I like extraction games as well I think you can make a good one of these games I just don't know that this this is it and yeah I, I would say that the map system is cool as well that's another thing that I think is pretty neat you basically pull out this digital pad that acts as a GPS map it shows you all the roads and the major points of interest you can also see a little bit on the peripheral of your vision things that are going on in the world so it doesn't completely blind you while you're looking at the map to what's happening in your vicinity I think that's pretty neat I think that map system is cool I think it looks good I think the premise is fine but at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. Currently, the game sits at overwhelmingly negative on Steam with an impressively low 16% approval rating from users, which is one of the lowest that I've seen in a while. I, I was going around just watching some streamers. I wanted to get other players' thoughts on the game, see what they were given for feedback, see how their play experience was going. And I saw a variety of things. I heard one point person though at a point say that everyone that was giving the game a low score on Steam, you know, le leading to its overwhelmingly negative reviews right now, this person said that they were just sheep, that they were just playing in to the herd mentality basically and hating on the game for the sake of it maybe or maybe it, this is simply a bad product and people are reacting to that it is not as advertised people expected an open world mmo uh, it is still described as such on their steam page right at this moment but what they got instead was an extraction shooter even as an extraction shooter if you like it which i myself do it is lacking many expected features no melee no mantling no barely any environmental engagement no events basically no zombies rarely coming across other players all while being full of bugs and glitches and i'm sure i've only documented a fraction of them while also having massive latency problems that make the combat and movement feel like crap. And beyond all of those things, at the end of the day, I just found the game plain boring. The world is static, there's not much going on, few zombies, fewer players, you're just running around a basically empty city, looting cars, and entering the occasional building. I would say that the only real redeeming quality that I can see in this is the fact that it's new, 
and you can PvP. So if you want to walk around in a new game that you have not seen and experienced before while fighting other players, great, that can be fun, and this game has that, but that's about all it has. <laughs> at the end of the day, I just want good games. That's all I really care about. We've talked at length about this developer's history, about the development of this game, about everything that's happened with the volunteers, with the store-bought assets, with the, the legal issues, with the constant delays, with the fact that this developer has abandoned every single one of their game that they put into early access so far that is the reality none of that really matters if they make a good game we talked about that stuff and we followed this stuff because i was interested in this game as a premise like i've said what they showed initially looked really promising upon looking further into it i saw some things that looked a little concerning all of that preamble all of that discourse around the game prior to it coming out doesn't matter if the game is good. Even with all of that in mind and with all of that knowledge, I was hoping this game would be good. And if this game were good, I would happily say so. I would prefer the world and the reality be that this video is me saying, guys, despite all of the concerns the day before came out, it's a killer new game. Sure, it's not a zombie survival MMO, but it's an extraction game and they did a really good job and it plays really well and it feels great. And I had super fun playing and I'm gonna keep playing today, but that is not it. That is not what they've done. As of now, on first impressions, no, I don't recommend buying or playing the day before. In fact, I've sent in a, a refund request on Steam. I've blown past my two hour limit that is typical before they uh, cut off uh, refunds, but I'm gonna fight for it anyways because I don't wanna give them money. Like, I, I, I consider this a sacrifice and hopefully this video as well as the stream that I did provides as a warning to keep you away from it for now. Maybe they turn it around. Other people have other impressions. I've actually seen um, other streamers and content creators speak quite highly. I feel like that is just because it's fun to go around a new game and fight other players. I think that is like the only virtue this game has, the only redeeming quality. Outside of that, if that's all you're looking for, walking around a new space that you haven't played in before and shooting players while everyone is still new and bad, yeah, absolutely, you can have fun with that. But everything else about this game is shallow, is lacking, is just outright abysmal. And the development, the history of this developer leaves me lacking any confidence that they are going to turn this around. But I hope they do. Because like I said, at the end of the day, all I want is a good game. Turn this into a good game and I'll play it. But right now, the day before, it's bad. It's just outright bad, in my opinion. And that's gonna do it for today. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I take, I, I, I gotta say, I take no pleasure in this. I wish this video were the opposite. It were me saying, wow, with all the issues, they ended up turning out something good. But that is not what has happened, unfortunately enough. That'll do it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.